Welcome back. We are getting ready to listen to some more Home Free. I've got Buddy here, as soon as I point my finger the right direction. Got Purdy right in front of me. We're going to sit back and relax a little bit. Well, I'll sit back as much as I can. I've got a funky leg. I've got a salt water wrap on my knee that I um, skinned up. You can see pictures of it on, well, just one picture. <laughs> I'm going to post the other picture, uh, today's picture on there too. Um, but that'll be on Discord if you're really that curious. Uh, <laughs> but at any rate, this is part two of the history of Home Free. And I don't know if there's going to be any more versions or not. Um, I finally edited and put up the part one uh, version. And so let's listen to how we sum things up, at least for part two. So just left off at the worst night ever. And I reacted to that specific video as well in the first one. Purdy's happy. She can get in her spot. Well, maybe. Lay down. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see what they say. Story of right. Well, and to be fair, if you're going into the music business, the music business is so finicky, you have to be persistent or you're not going to survive. And look how long the group had been together. Uh, the group as a whole had been together. Uh, before, you know, the payoff. Um, so, yeah, got to be persistent. So thank you, initial guys, for being persistent. <laughs> yep. Uh, in Minnesota, the blenders. Impulse. Yep. Impulse. Impulse. And we were trying to, like, follow them. So the blenders is Darren's group, and they're still going, I believe. So one of these schools, and just going down the list and be like, Giving them the pitch, talking to the choir director. And this is the pitch. And most of the time, before the internet, or they had the internet by now. Yeah, because Napster and all that. Forgot my timeline. Yeah. Um, we didn't come across as desperate. <laughs> no. Um, some of the worst ones were like, you know what the school was. I called the Indian Reservation. And, and they're just like completely dumbfounded by what I'm trying to talk about. I said, well, don't you have music in the school? And then they said, oh, we have a tribal drum. And then I'm just like, oh, man. Okay. <laughs> he feels he yeah, he feels shameful for calling the Indian Reservation, but you know their songs are all vocal, so yeah, it might be a long shot, but it might have worked, even though it's not part of their culture. <laughs> so I don't know. Vocal and a drum. This is, gonna, this is it. I think you guys can uh, do something. I think we need to work on a few things. <laughs> um, giving us notes right then and there. Well, and that's cool that he saw the potential and um, the talent that was there. Spring and the fall, two different tours. Mm -hmm. And then he said, like, we can pay you this. We can probably pitch you for this much per show. Mm -hmm. And immediately, you know, just like. <gasps> yes. <laughs> I want to say it was like two grand a show. It was We've been like, singing for $500 yeah. and a couple of ham sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, one of their mics went out, so I tried to turn up the volume of the video a little bit more on OBS. So hopefully Marla and anybody else that had uh, problems um, hearing part one, hopefully that helps a little bit. I, I played the videos low because of, it helps with copyright stuff and all that, although this is probably not copyrighted. But uh, <laughs> I don't want to play with my... Uh, sounds too much because then I'll ruin it for the stuff I'm normally uh, reacting to. But I, I purposely have them down low, so I'm sorry. And then I'm loud, and I know I'm loud. And then it, they're loud in my ears because the computer volume, the speaker volume that I'm hearing is different from the volume that OBS hears. So sometimes I'm shouting. So I, I'm not a sound engineer. I'm just doing this the easy way and that's not always the best quality way 
I'll apologize in advance if it's hard to hear them past this point. Who does your album? I contemplated and said there. I thought he was saying the wonders, um, but he's saying the blenders. <laughs> I was like, oh, was Darren in another group also? <laughs> so you can imagine that conversation I had with right. where. So I didn't realize Darren has been with the group or worked with the group for that long. Uh, so that, that's a long relationship to have. He is definitely family. <laughs> if you didn't know that before, you definitely know it now. <laughs> Hey, we need thirty thousand dollars to make a CD, <laughs> and we did that. And Matt kind of produced this whole just silly goofy video. I'll see if I can find that too. I have it. Okay, good. Yeah. Wow. We made a little song. Run the dance of everything. Funny. It was kind of fun. We just wanted to ask them, and they said yes. <laughs> you know, like they're thinking, oh, we're not good enough for this. They're not going to want us, whatever. And then, yeah. I used to say um, all the time in treatment, whether it was group or individual or whatever, I would always say you never know unless you try. And so that's basically what they're saying. You know, if you don't ask, you're never going to know. If you don't go knocking and making some noise, nobody's ever going to listen. That's all we had. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so we got found Rob? a guy named Jeff Ryder. Oh, okay. And we said, you want to make two grand a week or two grand a month on a cruise ship to Alaska in four months instead? He said, yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I can't believe that because, well, I, I can not believe that. The, people have different reasons for why they do what they do. And I've always said to employers when I've interviewed, you know, money's not the bottom line for me. As long as I can pay my bills that I've got, that's the biggest priority and then what what's the job detail or what are the benefits and you know all that kind of stuff it's not always about the salary and people don't realize how much a company pays on the back end not only their share of um, taxes and all that kind of stuff on you but there's a lot of other stuff that some companies pay even extra more for so like right now, I'm maxed out on my company's, what do, you, what do you call it, their share of my 401k. So um, they will match me up to a certain level, and I've maxed where they'll match me. So as long as I don't get fired, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be sitting pretty uh, for retirement, uh, which is about another 17 years. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, it, it's those things that you got to think of that are further down the line. But it, it, when you're looking at a job and money and, and just that, but this guy obviously turned down the $100,000 job because he wanted to do what he loved, which was singing or, or something like that. I forget exactly what he said. He studied in school, but it sounded like there was music involved for Jeff. Jeff? I think that's what they said his name is. So they're just talking about that, yeah. And knowing that we're going to be gone for four months on this contract with Celebrity Cruise Lines, we packed everything we could possibly pack. We sold a lot of box. It's a lot, but we ended up taking like half the back, which was kind of ridiculous. We didn't know. Yeah. Hey, I'd rather be prepared. You know, the scout motto, whether it's Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, is always be prepared. <laughs> I tend to overpack myself. I'm a mood packer. I, I'm a mood dresser. Depends on my mood. Depends on what I, how I dress. And so the, the Penn State games that I go to, it's fairly easy. I, I pack all my Penn State stuff. But I pack in layers now because I've been premenopausal for a long time. <laughs> um, and I, I think we've actually hit the peri, the official perimenopausal uh, stage of life. My doctor hasn't said that yet. I've self-diagnosed that. But 
So I never know if I'm going to be hot or cold. Lately, I'm hot and everything. Even in my basement, which is not heated, I'm down there in just my PJs. I've got my fleece socks on with my fleece slippers. But I don't do a robe or anything like that Uh, because I found if I did the robe, I was still cold. So I put the heater on that was the heating blanket. I now have a seat heater, but (laughs) the um, I would end up sweating. So I found if I do just my PJs, I'm lucky in that I get to wear my PJs to work. Uh, If I do just my PJs and then the seat heater, no robe. I can usually do half my shift without the heat. And then um, the last half of my shift, I need the heat on. Um, but, you know, that's just how crazy my body is. I I used to sleep with a big, thick comforter in the middle of summer. I was cold all the time. And now I'm just hot all the time. And so I think the face flushing that I've been having uh, that you sometimes see in my videos, um, one side of my face will get very flushed and hot. Sometimes you only see it in the cheeks on the video, but yeah. Uh, So packing, that's how we got into this. (laughs) So Even when I have a limited event and I know this is pretty much how I'm going to dress, I still pack extra stuff just to be safe. Uh, and to be able to layer and all that kind of stuff. So I I can't imagine pack. I've never been on a cruise. I can't imagine limiting my stuff for a cruise. So I don't know how I'd handle that. I And I'm sure you can only take so much on the cruise with you. I'm sure they limit it. But yeah, I, I don't know how I would survive that. But always be prepared. Yeah, so we did that for four months. A lot of stories from those four months. So you just... That's just a huge ship. And I know they're big ships. I mean, they've got, some of them have two or three pools on the decks, you know. So y- you know they're huge. Running tracks, all that kind of stuff, just depending on what type of cruise you get. That's huge. I wonder how big... They are in comparison with the Titanic because the Titanic was just what the name is. It was was huge. It was Titanic. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, doing Les Mis, it was a three and a half hour show, eight shows a week. Yeah, Broadway in similar type of performances, I'll put it that way, is just really grueling on the actors. They put a lot of time and energy into their shows and three and a half hours that I think it's during the weekdays, it's one a day. And then like Saturday there's two. So these seven, is there two on Sunday also? Are they, it is Broadway open on Sundays. Maybe it's two on Friday, two on Friday, two on Saturday, and then one the rest of the week. Does that make eight? I don't know, but I know it, it's uh, pretty rough on the uh, performers. I don't want to call them actors because they're acting and they're singing. I mean, part of the thing with Broadway is the singing. So performance, right? Performers. So he said, hey, when we're porting in New York City, uh, they can hear you. Like if you just run down 28 blocks, um, they can, <laughs> they're open to see you. And I was like, whoa, okay. So... Oh, and that just proves you never know who's going to have connections. So they met this Jeff guy, um, different Jeff guy, on the cruise ship. He he was part of the uh, one of the other performances. Three days after we got back, they called me and said, we want you on a ship in two days. Yes, sir. And my girlfriend at the time was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> so you were working with Rob Lundquist a lot yeah, during so, that time. Yeah, yeah. so we saw Rob. Uh, with the new foreshadow. Rob! Wow. I am not used to seeing him without all of that beard. And he still has a beard there, but it's not all that beard. <laughs> Did you just look at his cheeks. Okay. So we talked to our agent, put us on that ship and say, hey, we need to be named as entertainer. And he actually did get us a two-week stint 
on another ship as guest entertainers in our field, our first guest entertainer board. Well, and just proof again that if you don't ask for it, you're not going to get it. So Adam asked for it and they got it. So that's cool. Sugar and spice. After the NCL thing, Elliot, we got to like, another group. Yes. It was something that was full time. We were full time. So, Can't blame him for that. But you know, that's how you learn, not only learn your part and stuff, but learn what you like and what you don't like. Dad had uh, tapes, cassette tapes all the time uh, that he would play in the car uh, of songs he either needed to learn or keep in memory or just listen to how they were doing the song uh, with the group he played, the, the group he played with. We were constantly listening to old, old timer music, which is probably why I don't listen to a lot of it now. But <laughs> that's how Dad taught. Dad he tells a story uh, at his, I think this was at his retirement party, but he was telling a story about how he he learned violin, learning how to read music sheets and learning how to play based off the music sheets. Well, here in the mountains, they play by ear. And so when our family moved here, he actually had to take lessons on how to learn to play by ear. All the, all the music is passed down and it's not necessarily written down, although it is. You can find music sheets for it. But the tradition is you sit around in your uh, jams, your jam sessions, which is just a group of musicians who are playing different songs. And if they know the song, they join in. If they don't know the song, they may sit out. Um, or they may sit there and start picking out different chords that go with that song, you know, and start learning it. He tells that story. And so he... That's one reason why he did the tapes all the time was so he could listen to the tune so he could remember how the tune is supposed to go and all that kind of stuff. But I got, I'm getting sidetracked a lot. I apologize. <laughs> I think Adam gave himself a budget of $150, not per room per night, but for the tour. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> yeah. And it was a one star. And <laughs> oh my gosh! I won't even do one stars. And I, I was like, "Hey, I can go to this other place." And, and they told me on the phone, "Yeah, you really don't want to go over there." <laughs> that's, that's probably not the, Why couldn't we have stayed there? <laughs> and he's like, "Because that was ten dollars more." <laughs> I hope when we start doing right. three rooms and then rotating who got the room to themselves. Yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, I think I had his name, Tony Singh from Jupiter. I tracked him down. And I called him up. I could tell him the phone, like, whoa, okay, this guy is, uh, he's different. Uh, he's got a deep voice. <laughs> be sure to be on the lookout for episode three. So they are doing another one. I can't read the rest of it because their um, video thingies are in the way. But <laughs> we, where we delve in something to the story of Rob, maybe? R-O. I think it's about Rob. Rob and Tim, that might be it. It's interesting to hear the, the struggles that they went through and what they were willing to go through to get where they are now. So th that's cool to hear. And um, the fact that Matt was following his dream, that's great also. And I don't know what he does now. And they may say, I don't know. I know at some point Matt's going to have to dip out because he was no longer with the group. Although, is he still is he still considered a, a co-founder? I guess you're always a co-founder. But um, I know Chris and Adam are the ones that they always talk about being the co-founders. But it seems like Matt is pretty much a co-founder also, because it sounds like he was there from the beginning. He it's him that helped with the name and all that kind of stuff. So is that one of the credits he gets as co-founder? 
I'm sure you diehards will let me know. So <laughs> thank you all for joining me on this one, and I will see you on the next one as soon as they release it. Bye.